Hi, everybody. I hope all of you are doing good, safe in these trying times. Uh, thanks to the team for giving me this opportunity to uh, be a fellow, fellow panelist with some of esteemed uh, panel members like you. Uh, I think no meeting, no conference is complete today if we don't talk about AI, right? And it is really changing the way we do even some routine work. Forget talking about high-end business stuff, right? Whether it is improving productivity, improving efficiency, or just getting results faster. I think LLMs and especially chat GPT has taken over the world, right? As, as we maneuver tough business times, it will be interesting to see how uh, generative AI teams up with digital transformation and helps organization leap into the next decade of growth, whereby making India the third largest economy, which is uh, forecasted by our Honorable Prime Minister by 2030, and then propel us into much more economic growth over the next four or five years. Uh, with that, uh, thank you once again. Uh, let us start with some opening comments. Uh, let me start with you, Hemant. Uh, your opening comments, please. Yeah, myself, uh, Hemant Burma. Currently, I'm heading uh, uh, CTO and CIO in Punjab National Bank. Um, as most of the, you must be knowing, we are one of the largest bank of the country. And so the IT setup. So nowadays, uh, the entire bank is running on IT and digitization. Uh, regarding, th thanks for this opportunity given to me. Um, well, AI, li like just be told about uh, AI and Gen AI is the buzzing words. So we are also embarked on this journey and uh, working on this uh, to give better experience to our customer as well as internal customers. Thank you. Very good. Thank you for the you know, very crisp opening comments uh, you want to give both customers whether it is internal and external better customer experience uh, and i think that's one of the mantras of all companies today uh, thank you for that uh, amit your opening comments please yeah jasprit uh, so i am amit aroda i am cio at uh, shri uh, so we are a fashion brand we are into daily ethnic wear i have run uh, two two decades of uh, experience now and uh, so we are uh, utilizing AI in terms of managing our uh, merchandising and all. And uh, I've been working a lot in uh, retail technology, enterprise scale, uh, automation and digital transformation. So uh, I hope I'll be able to share uh, some knowledge and uh, learn new things from the panel. Perfect. Amrish, if I could bring you in, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, myself, I'm Rish Kumar Singh. I'm CISO for Godrej and Boys Manufacturing Company Limited. Uh, in Godrej and Boys, we started working, we have started using actually uh, uh, Gen AI kind of sites for the productivity purpose, nothing else. Right now, we have some plans for the future. Right now, like uh, uh, communication team, marketing team, or maybe uh, our, our uh, interior team, they use these technologies to uh, get a better uh, productivity for them, their themselves and their team. So I will be talking more much from the security perspective because any technology comes, there is a flip side to it, right? So uh, we'll discuss. Thank you. Very interesting, Amrish. And I think uh, yesterday also uh, there was a small incident around deep fakes. Would be very interesting to know your perspective on, uh, you know, how do you balance innovation, creativity with security. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Manjunath, hi. Your opening comments, please. Hi. Uh, thanks, Sir Jaspreet. Uh, this is Manjunath. I work for TVS Mobility. We are into the automobile uh, division. So we, uh, I am working here for the last uh, 10 plus years in this organization with an overall experience around uh, for more than two decades. So we are primarily utilizing AI. We are just taking the baby steps because for automobile digitization is uh, something we are embarking on for the last two, three years. We are not like a BFSS sector where our technology is the core. So with the recent changes happening post COVID, we are seeing a lot of push uh, for digitization happening in automobile sector also. In that perspective, 
we are looking at AI to be used for how I can improve my customer experience because we are purely on a hands and leg support model. So we are looking at AI, how we can improve our customer experience. That is one area. And from the IT sector, we are looking at how we can improve our faster deployments, faster code development and faster deployment. That's our use case as of today. Wow. And, and at least I know so many people in the automobile sector, uh, uh, Manjunath and and they tell me there's there's a new revolution coming uh, in in terms of use of AI and next and next gen technologies from a digital disruption perspective, right? Uh, cars talking to you, you talking to the cars, and 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 what not, right? Uh, so thank you for those opening comments, uh, Puneet. Please, can I request you to go next? Well, thank you very much, Jaspreet. Uh, first of all, I think it's really an honor and privilege to be part of this very esteemed uh, panel and group over here. So really appreciate that. Uh, my name is Puneet Bhardwaj. I'm part of the Kane Oil and Gas, which is part of the uh, larger Vedanta group. And, you know, as you see, as you know, I mean, oil and gas is what defines us. We are into oil and gas explorations, drilling operations uh, across, uh, you know, our, our plants in Rajasthan, in, in Assam, and in offshore in the sea in, near to Andhra Pradesh as well. So we have just embarked upon our uh, AI and digitalization journey. And I think what comes to my mind uh, in brief is, you know, what used to be a center of, you know, attraction or discussion was digital transformation. But now I think gen generative AI or AI is now kind of influencing digital transformation itself. So, uh, what I feel in short is, you know, generative AI or AI is, is probably acting as the, the catalyst, which is, you know, driving digital transformation forward. So in a way, you know, AI or generative AI is now pushing the digital transformation far ahead where it could have, you know, just been a laggard somewhere. So we're just taking some baby steps like, you know, others in the industry, but I think uh, seems to be an exciting journey and looking forward to it, you know, and uh, see how we can, you know, benefit the industry and to our country as well. Thank you. Superb. So, so yeah, you know, I think uh, uh, probably similar thoughts. I think AI will propel or AI is actually propelling a lot of digital disruption that is happening in our, uh, in the world, right? I would not only restrict it to our country. I think AI is at the forefront of some of those changes. Uh, thank you, Puneet. Uh, Ram Prakash, can I request you to go next, please? Uh, sure, Mr. Jaspreet. Uh, I'm Ram Prakash. I lead the AI research for Manage Engine, a division of Zoho Corp. Uh, at Manage Engine, we build uh, tools for IT admins, system admins, network admins, everything from your service delivery to monitoring to security to logs management and all that. Uh, so I was the first intern who joined Zoho Corp to experiment with AI to see where AI would fit the enterprise uh, world. And uh, fortunately, the technology became so big. Uh, so today I'm a part of a group called Zoho Labs, where we lead the AI R&D for the uh, whole company. And uh, in a nutshell, I see AI in the enterprise uh, to, to break it down, to make it very simple, uh, just give the next best action at any given point in time. So your uh, system is going down. What should you be doing now? Somebody has raised an asset request. What is the next best action? Now that is where AI is contemplating. And uh, uh, I would call it decision automation. You moved from process automation to decision automation. So looking forward to discussing more in the panel. I, I love the word, you know, you learn something every day, right? Uh, can really a decision-making piece be automated? If yes, then do we need humans? But uh, that's another, maybe that's a topic for another panel. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ram Prakash, uh, for your opening comments. Vinod, may I may I request you to come in and please, uh, you know, give your opening comments. Sure. Thank you, uh, Jaspreet, for having me. Again, it's a pleasure, uh, the honor to be you know, talking among our fellow panelists, and I'm sure a lot of takeaways for the audience as well. Uh, see, from aviation perspective, uh, before we jump into AI and Gen AI, data is very important. So a lot of focus on the overall digital strategy, and one of that core element is the data strategy. So the whole data governance, uh, mm -hmm. the whole data privacy, all that is uh, paramount, and last two, three years have been very, very uh, Know, crucial for us in terms of defining a new operating model for the industry. So exactly. that will continue because a lot of services have moved from offline to online. A lot of uh, you know, laws have been uh, are being put in place, although it was already a regulated industry. So that's the broad premise. At the same time, you have got a lot of uh, 
progress on the AI Gen AI front. So we have been able to uh, leverage, uh, you know, these technologies, uh, you know, internally for our staff as well as slowly opening up for our customers as well, uh, because customers, as I said, that there's a lot more uh, obligations for that. But uh, we believe that uh, now since the data is or the business is based on the data and uh, AI is going to be or is being seen as part of the transformation. Uh, it is the only way you can exist. It, it's not a, anymore an optional thing. It is the only way you can do business. Because if you can't do it, your competition is going to define a new rule. So the rules of the game have changed and uh, good news is that the, there are technologies to help, but important is that what problem you are going to solve. That clarity in that is very important. I'll take a pause here. Uh, excellent comments. I think uh, it, it, it's like, it's like uh, you know, uh, in Art of War, uh, Zarzu says that uh, war has been declared, right? Either you can decide to lead it or you can decide to be left out. So, so uh, people or companies who embrace the entire AI, Gen AI model will either be front runners or there will be laggards. Absolutely. Right. And uh, uh, superb. Uh, thank you, Vinod. Uh, with this, uh, maybe, you know, Heyman, uh, uh, you know, public sector bank, largest, uh, like, like you said, huge customer base. How how easy it is to adopt Gen AI in your own organization, and what are the uh, you know what strategies is your organization taking uh, with AI, and how does it impact the overall business and then the customers? See, in public sector uh, space of banking, uh, like BNB's legacy of one twenty eight years and uh, different kind of data sets for doing or any kind of analytics or using AI, you have to have better data sets. So foremost challenge for us is the data cleaning. You should have a good data. Then only you can have proper AI based on it. So our first focus is to clean our data. So where you can have proper analytics. See garbage in, garbage out. So first we have to clean out our garbage. So that uh, we are doing in campaign mode, it is already done and some of something is left out that will be done very shortly. Besides that, we are uh, the, the customers who have onboarded recently, la past few years back, for the, those customers, we are having data which is clean and analytical uh, can be done on that. So uh, like I said, we are doing using AI for our internal as well as external customers for their experience. So uh, for customization, customized products, uh, for uh, better uh, customer offering for third party products, uh, we are using AI for increasing our business funnel for those capturing those customer. There we are doing for analytics. So right now we are doing AI for our analytics purpose and offering the customers as per their need. We are focusing on that. And for my internal customers, uh, we are help desk. My back offices where I need repetitive kind of jobs, there we are using robotics as well as AI both. So it has increased the productivity, uh, lower cost. And for customer side, uh, like help desk, customer care, there we are able to tackle the customer as per their requirement immediately. We have more specific kind of clients as well as uh, uh, agents sitting at the call center for the particular product based, we are diverting the calls and giving the support to the customers. Very, very well articulated uh, Heman on uh, some of the strategies. Amit, your perspective, please, on this. Yeah, yeah, just with. so, uh... So we are we are also a very customer centric brand. We understand what our customer need and you know how we can satisfy the customer in terms of shopping experience or any other uh, through analytics or uh, maybe product recommendations or a lot of things which which we are doing already. But one uh, one of the very very major uh, thing which we are doing right now is uh, automated our uh, uh, replenishments. 
to our stores. So we have currently 150 stores in India and 10 outside India. So uh, although we are using AI, so what we do is we run a pilot first of all, understand the business needs, cost analysis, and then the pilot. Because without pilot, I believe a lot of challenges uh, you face once you make it live. So we do a pilot. So we have run a little pilot wherein... Uh, so whatever uh, replenishment is currently happening, so if a store A require maybe 500 products, store B would need 350 products. So we have built a model wherein, uh, so AI suggests us that you need to send 356 product to store A, 576 product to store B, and if required during the course, you need to transfer from store B to store A also. So inter-store transfers, plus warehouse to uh, stores uh, replenishments. So that thing we are doing and we are anticipating that around not, uh, if not more, 15 to 20% stock discrepancies we can reduce in terms of uh, if we if we embed this model live. We are already maturing this model. We are already making it uh, more uh, mature wherein humans are already, uh, you know, analyzing what kind of replenishments are being suggested by the system. So this is currently happening. I've just gone through one of the recent data wherein almost 90 million tons of textile waste goes to landfills every year in US itself, right? So I believe AI can help us a lot in terms of reducing the waste sustainability and a lot of actions can be, uh, you know, uh, computerized or AI based wherein that seasons can be uh, more accurate in terms of if the model is well trained and the data as Mr. Heyman also suggested if the data is good the the learning learning is good then obviously the uh, if the garbage is not going in definitely good product will come out in terms of uh, what you actually need in your business and this is what we are currently embedding and it is maturing I cannot say that it is 100% mature but it is maturing and we are getting results out of it uh, only only Point is on this is the ESG impact of every AI implementation. I know as CIOs, how much does it impact you? Do you also look at ROI from a carbon neutrality perspective? But maybe maybe that's a question for later. Uh, thank you, uh, Amit. Uh, Amrish, we've heard a couple of use cases, right? Businesses want to propel AI front of everything, uh, right? I think what Heyman and Amit tried to also say was that the customer is at the center of this entire AI piece, right? And, and then you think about customer centricity, how do you want to fulfill orders faster, better, to also give a much more better customer experience. But, but on the other side is the dark world of using AIs for, you know, whatever, for uh, uh, nefarious reasons, if I were to, uh, to call it. What are your thoughts uh, on, on that, Amrish? Yeah, I think uh, any t technology disruption, right? It has got two sides. And I personally strongly believe, I think, uh, that uh, digital transformation and cybersecurity is two sides of the same coin, first thing. Second thing, if you look at, uh, see, 20 years back, like people used to say, internet is back, okay? And then now, after 20 years today, we are everyone here on internet, okay? If you look at before, I mean, some time, some many decades back, we used to say cloud is bad because cloud is not secure, etc. A bunch of other many things, right? Today, literally everybody is on cloud or they are moving to cloud or they are using cloud in some other form. Similarly, if you look at the AI, okay, the uh, most popular is Chat GPT. But today, if you look at, we have got more than 1,200 websites, applications uh, similar to Chat GPT, okay. So uh, see the and, and today, if you look at today users. They are aware what is happening, what is AI, how they can leverage. Okay, more than probably you trying to understand the business case, etc. Okay, so what from the security perspective, what why I've been driving here is, uh, can you strike a balance? Okay, do I know uh, what users are doing, and do they know what they are supposed to do? What is the uh, legitimate uses? What is the right way of using such technology, disruptive technology? Okay, so. Uh, what we did is probably we started looking at the policy front, awareness program, et cetera, to make sure that even if somebody is using, we are going to allow him, but we are try, go, going to tell them, okay, here is the way you should use it. Okay, first thing. Second thing is, we I've been personally, we have uh, had a couple of sessions for the organization, in, within the organization, 
talking about deep fake deep fake video audios recently a lot of things have happened with respect to sachin you might have seen right yeah and if you talk about the the kind of cyber fraud is happening with the help of the deep fake is you must all have must have heard about the delhi doctor case right she lost around 4 year of money uh, within 4 5 hours it was a clear example of deep fake today upi fraud is happening and today reported cases cases of fraud is around 80 90 crore so you can assume that that fraud will be much much 10 times 20 times bigger because uh, i'll give a simple example somebody trying to call you and uh, that voice will be uh, probably uh, exactly same your voice voice i probably is going to ask uh, i lost my mobile i came to market okay and uh, I, i was supposed to pay 500 rupees uh can you transfer on this upi to this number because uh, here is a gentleman who is helping me to talk to you correct our voice is same of your wife what you will do generally you feel that okay the 500 rupees you transfer right uh, this is a defect so this is happening as we speak okay so technology adoption by the criminals probably they are much faster uh, you know that they need not to go through the various processes compliance etc right as a defender as a uh, owner of the productivity like cio cities or uh, here Uh, our adoption is uh, very very uh, at slow pace as compared to the criminals because they are using this technology to the maximum because a lot of these things are state sponsored also okay and from the security front from technology front to protect the organization from such frauds oems are also trying to keep the pace with the, this such technology right such frauds so there is a always a catch uh, Uh, there's a game, right? But uh, a catch-up game. But uh, still, so uh, still a lot of things has to be done. If you look at the cyber security, cyber security product has to utilize the power of AI enabled to the maximum. If you talk about any security product, they say that it is AI powered. I have ML. If you look at what they are exactly doing, they are saying that oh, okay, we are maturing, maturing, right? So that is the the gap is widening. With the advent of Gen AI, the gap is widened further. Oh, and I may think, I just I add, some... may I just add two cents to that. You know, secure yeah. angle. Just please, if you allow me, please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah please. Thank you. So, uh, I think uh, you know, uh, Amrish brings a good security angle to the discussion here. You know, because you know, we all were a little bit you know scared when cloud came in. You know, what happens to my data? And we were all scared. What happens to the data? It'll go out in the cloud somewhere. I don't even know that. So we have passed that stage, you know, as we matured through. But I think just, you know, I would agree to some extent to this point, you know, that scariness or that threat which we felt in our minds is probably more what we have felt in the cloud, in the cloud uh, generation. It seems much more scary. Uh, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not undermining the AI benefits. Don't get me wrong on that. But I think the the, the scarcity level or not the, the, the scariness of the, of the uh, deep fakes, and other things you know they are at a much higher volume than or at much greater you know threat perception what we had in the cloud area so i mean i'm just trying to compare the cloud journey with the ai transitioning journey so i think obviously we have to be careful but i think uh, we have to be make a very very cautious approach as we move into these new technology areas so yes. just my two cents thank you perfect thank you for that uh, amrish and puneet uh, manjunath if i just bring you in right everybody is talking about ai how do we implement ai what is the benefit ai does uh, amrish and puneet spoke about maybe perils of ai but you know when you implement ai i would want to understand some practical experiences that companies go through and have a problem while you implement you know what should i look out for and and if somebody on the call wants to start the journey in ai what would be your recommendation to them if we really want to start on the journey of ai i think it's best to identify a business case of what is the benefit you are going to achieve what is the objective you are going to achieve we have to start with that i i don't think we have to just start for the sake of uh, starting okay i have also deployed ai in my company i don't think so that would be the right approach or it would be a costly affair if we go by that way so my suggestion would be to is to just identify the business case of how you can utilize this benefit of ai into that definitely now as of now we have seen the it sector being a biggest benefiter of ai for the code implementation the code optimizations and all 
So the IT has begun uh, being the first adopter of AI. Now coming to the business use case, where we are trying to see the business use case is to improve supply chain, supply chain and warehouse management. We are trying to see how we can use AI in that sector to improve my replenishment, improve my supply chain, improve my uh, delivery to the customer. So these are the areas which we are trying to explore AI for our uh, automobile sector. But going forward, when we start utilizing IoT, because IoT processes are going on a lot in our organization, once I have enough data collected via IoT, then I can. that is a very big use case for me to deploy AI into that segment and see, generate uh, the productive analysis of the vehicle or the customer experience, alert notifications. So that is going to be a future big case for me for to improve my uh, analysis. That's where I see from my side. Excellent, uh, Manjunath. And I think uh, that is where probably I'll want to bring uh, Vinod in. Vinod, uh, in your opening comment, you spoke about, you know, some of the cautious methods that we need to take, uh, whether it's data security, data privacy, um, you know, there's this whole debate around uh, uh, going on in the uh, US, EU, uh, India as well on the ethics and responsible use of AI. What what would be your two cents on 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 this? How how do we how do we tread this way forward? You know, it's it's quite tricky. Everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon of AI, right? But it's it's at the cost of data. It's at the cost of privacy. How how do you balance both of these? It is Preet, uh, we are in a business to serve customers. We are not in a business to show to the world that we embraced AI. So it's important that we look at the technology from, I think we our fellow panelists talked about that, look at the business problem we are trying to solve. I think that goes to the core, that if you have to get even the funding for these AI projects, you need to be very clear that you will not get it if you are not able to present a proper business case with proper ROI. And that ROI cannot be after one year or two years. It has to be very incremental ROI shown to the board and they will probably get funding for the first phase itself. And there is where the whole uh, ethical AI, the responsible AI, you know, what, how is AI going to be leveraged? We need to stand up as the tech leaders and explain that what AI can do today and what are the areas which it, set us, it still hasn't matured. I think that we need to be very clear. For example, uh, AI... Gen AI can be very well leveraged within B2B, within the organization. When I say not the customer facing. And there are many use cases we have embarked on where which which where you define the boundaries to these LLMs. You can define that what they can look at, how you train these uh, LLM models. So it that gives really a good confidence and a good uh, organization change management to the leaders also and to the whole uh, company and enterprise saying that how can you embrace such technologies and over the period of time as these technologies mature, you can actually get your enterprise ready while you are uh, you know, addressing the business problems. When I say business problems, it can be an automation, very simple automation, meaningful automation. Uh, it can be the questions related to your policies. It can be questions related to your procedures. It can be the decisions which you need to take on the revenue management side, on the search side. It can really help you out. But wherever, and it has to be obviously unbiased, it has to be ethical, that, that goes by design. And wherever you are not sure, I think you can take the legal expert opinion, you can take the uh, your partner's opinion, that whether we should go for it or not. And unless we get the green signal, I think it's better to wait and uh, take those steps uh, wherever it is prone, wherever the regulatory you know, bodies have uh, okayed that particular technology. But there are there are ample use cases today where you can just run with AI, Gen AI, aggressively, and it will make a lot of difference. For example, as I said, that the whole monitoring operations, look at the whole flight operations, you can make it much more smarter than uh, with uh, the uh, inventory management, your whole MRO, whole training, whole onboarding, uh, whole uh, you know customer facing wherever it is within your boundary. You can easily, easily uh, make it uh, you know, you can implement it. So yes, there are do's and don'ts. There is a very fine line, but uh, you cannot just stay away from it. Also, it is a necessary quote unquote evil which you need to carry with you. But I think it can be a very powerful weapon for you. It can be a powerful weapon not to run your organization alone. It can be a powerful weapon to create 
a differentiation, create a value creation which will be much ahead, uh, you know, from your competition. Uh, that's what we look at these uh, these this technology, not to run our operations, uh, you know, efficiently or smoothly alone. Superb. You've given us two very different perspectives. One is, and I'll quote the second one first, one is using some of these models, AI and all, at a very, very fast pace for a competitive advantage to become the early movers, uh, early mover advantage in the industry. And, and second, you said uh, a lot of times you're also using it for your internal operations, internal efficiencies, right? But with, with that, probably in mind, let me come to Ram Prakash, right? And, and I think uh, the question here is, you would want to use it for internal pieces, but how much of employee awareness is also being catered to, right? Uh, some of us in uh, in this room are fortunate enough to be technologists who understand AI, who understand LLMs, who understand how to use them. How do you create that mass awareness within organizations, within your employees, within your entire ecosystem to take benefit of the AI? Can I request Ram Prakash to come in, please? Great question, Jaspreet. Uh, so, and, and since you were the first employee, right, you were the only one who knew LLM, right? There was yeah. nobody else who would understand what yeah. you are doing. So, how did you create that awareness internally first, right? Saying that, you know, this can be a game changer in two years, three years, etc. Yeah. I mean, uh, when we started, we were looking at AI, and AI was primarily a B2C technology back then. I mean, uh, I always believe technology gets incubated in the consumer space and then enterprise comes in with a late mover advantage. I mean, if you think about it, uh, five years ago, we didn't have a lot of enterprise mobile apps, but today a lot of enterprise work gets done via uh, mobile apps. So the same thing happened to AI when we started off. We were looking at companies uh, uh, or consumer software that were having data as a revenue model. I mean, we don't pay for our search engines. We don't pay for our social networks. But then we give back a lot of personal data and then they mine it to target ads on us. And then eventually that's a very successful business model. So when we came in uh, 2011, 12 types, uh, we wanted to see where AI could help the enterprise. And in the enterprise, monetizing your data to pay for software simply doesn't make sense because your data is your own uh, business secret. It's your competitive advantage and you don't want to give it to a player just so you can get the software at a discounted price. So this was the first step. So where we started pitching in was uh, we didn't really introduce groundbreaking uh, AI stuff. What we did was try and replace existing uh, models that, so for one instance, we started doing anomaly detection. So anomaly detection has been around for ages. So you, you use a statistical technique, just put in a bell curve and say the bottom 10 and the top 10 are classified as anomalies. Instead, we started bringing back uh, past data. We started learning from past data. We understood trends, patterns, and randomness that were present in the data. So basically, it's the same anomaly system, but much more smarter. Something that learned from past data, something that understood patterns. And sometime around 2015-16, we launched this. Uh, of course, we do a lot of dog food. Manage Engine runs on Manage Engine. So we launched it in our uh, uh, data center operations team. And the first question two weeks later, they came back to us was, hey, how do I turn this off? Right. So three years, four years of effort. And uh, the first question that came in, not even from a customer, but from somebody whom we uh, get a lot of beta feedback, somebody whom we work with closely was to, how do I shut this down? So that is where we realized this technology is at best 75 to 80% accurate. Now, how do you spruce it up so that you gain the trust of the customers or the employees that are using it? One thing that worked is adding explanations to the decisions wherever possible. Remember, I spoke about decision automation. And if the model is also able to tell the agent or the person who's using it on why it flags this particular reading as an anomaly, why it gave out this decision, then that led our usages go up. And slowly after that, things were very easy. One thing led to the other. The pandemic happened. Uh, what was only accessible from the office network on the office on the office device became accessible from any device on any network. So remote work is here to stay. So that kind of brought in more need for security protocols, uh, monitoring user and entity behavior analysis just so they are not abnormal. So slowly in IT, we are seeing the movement from 
uh, rules to dynamic thresholds, what were static rules are now becoming dynamic thresholds. Uh, but early days, like you said, it was a challenge to getting the mind share of people who are using the software to use that AI powered automation part. But now uh, things like ChatGPT, things like DALI, uh, the incumbent has done something really big. So everybody wants to try and see where AI can add value. I would say we are in a much easier spot in 2024 than we were in 2014. Oh, super. Yeah, absolutely. 10 years is a long time, right? Uh, like, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, uh. so let's let's start in the reverse order, right? And, and I think, Ram Prakash, now this question is to you. Uh, and and how do you justify and probably a one line answer from all of you before we get into the closing comments uh, how do you justify roi on the investment in gen ai today <laughs> that's a tough question just <laughs> so one thing that we have seen at least in terms of it i mean uh, we have known that it has moved from the back office to the boardroom but that doesn't mean we get unlimited budget for our it so this is an evolving technology. It's good to have one foot in it and, and play the game so that you're not left out. At least with respect to generative AI, we haven't seen much of a value addition in enterprise. It's, it's a good consumer tool. I mean, it can write essays, it can do tour plans, but the enterprise space due to a lot of reasons like cost, privacy, uh, availability, bar too high to enter, we still haven't seen actual ROI with Gen AI in the enterprise right now. And on adoption, you know, uh, just with I can add is, it has to do yeah. a lot of things to do with the industry, organization, culture of the company, and uh, uh, what are the latest things about it. Because see, uh, if you look at the BPSI, maybe the newest companies, the adoption will be at certain percentage, right? Look at the other industry like manufacturing or adoption, people started thinking about, so started thinking about from the productivity perspective, how can I enhance my productivity daily routine or daily work by using this technology, which is freely available or maybe uh, uh, subscribe to the uh, super, like super. Yeah. yeah but but you know unfortunately amrish a lot of you are from manufacturing and and you will see that at least in my conversations uh manufacturing or uh, some other ancillary industries are no longer legards they are equally front runners in terms of adoption the only difference is in b2c companies like a telecom operator or a bank you see it in your face right in 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 your kind of industries it is back off it, it, it's more happening internally like we know said we know Correct. your comments please on the roi yeah please. to enhance the adoption probably you have to drive the change that become the change management change engines yes yeah. absolutely yeah yeah as i said uh this brief in my comments that this technology will take time to materialize you cannot stand up and say that you know what now all my business is going to run on jet ai that will not happen it will take time having said this but there is a lot of a lot of uh, appreciation and uh, appetite for AI-based decision models, AI-based service models, AI-based preventive models. So it is really helping. And you are good news is that you can slowly get the open AI, gen AI, uh, chat GPT kind of models, as I said, that not the customer facing, but make them within the enterprise and define the boundary of that so that you are very sure about the data set, you are very sure about the training. So that is happening. And as we speak, that really gets very good, we have picked up very good business problems, which it is really solving us in the aviation industry. And the initial POCs are very, very promising. So I think we're embarking like that. So, but ROI will be only measured when it is solving a business problem at a faster pace, whether it is, you know, uh, automation, whether it is the productivity improvement, whether it is, uh, you know, the competitive advantage, if you want to create it, because Many, many, you know, players may not have that advantage if they have it. And I spoke in my first comment is the data strategy. So if you are aggressively moving on the data strategy very fast, getting the whole digitization to digitalization done and governance is very well done, I think putting these models on top of it becomes a lot more easier. And obviously one lens which uh, we did not speak about the regulatory lens. So you, you can, you have to put InfoSec lens and the regulatory lens together and see that whether they pass through that or not. So once once you get the green signal, uh, I believe that the momentum will be a lot more. What we are seeing today. Sure, thank you. Um, I think regulatory lens is very very important, and that's why there is this whole noise on the uh, ethics and responsible use of AI. The frameworks that US EU have already passed, and India is 
on on the way uh, uh, thank you so much uh, vinod amit your comments please on on the roi piece and maybe then we can go to you manjuna <clears throat> yeah so uh, i think generative ai as uh, we know that another gentleman uh, rightly said that it cannot run the business although it can be a integral part going in the coming years so one of the example i would like to quote is uh, so we used to call customers uh, after you know once they bought the product right this call is uh, not uh, it's it's a random call to a few customers now for example we have a million customers we're talking to a company who will assist us in getting the nps uh, by calling with the gen ai and uh, with the uh, local languages also they have uh, introduced with a very human like voice right and uh, although the the companies are you know uh, doing lot of work in answering those calls from 7 seconds to 12 seconds so they're working lot of uh, activities uh that the people uh, answer the robotic calls they they are very human like so uh, calling a million customer in a day is definitely not possible uh, you know even if you put a lot of manpower but with 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 ai with technology with uh, this definitely it is achievable to some extent but you need to understand again how uh, how it is relevant to you because lot of calls uh, may get unanswered or 50% will drop out or whatever these things are so definitely business needs is very much important so uh, as uh, uh, one of the gentlemen also rightly said i think manchunar mentioned that that we should not run after that uh, you know another brand or another company or another person has uh, introduced a specific product or a specific solution in the organization you should also do that it's not like that you will not get any marks out of that you know we we have lot of retailers like h&m has launched this uh, you know uh, mirror where in uh, people can shop and they're very interactive uh, mirror in the trial rooms so for us for we are also retailer but it's it's not relevant for us our customers understand they go they go and touch and feel the products so relevancy of a business is very much important but uh the security part is also mentioned so i think uh, uh one of the thing uh, it also helps us a lot you know uh, like last year uh, uh, if you have heard rogers in canada which is one of the prime uh, internet company they got down for for more than 24 hours so aims got one of the examples yeah, yeah. when you got when you tons of examples yeah, yeah. once you listen these news from the media so i think promoters also uh, take some interest that see we need to be ready that you know these kind of cyber attacks definitely will happen today or tomorrow we should be ready but yeah these news uh, definitely helps us passing the budgets which is very difficult otherwise that's, that's a very that, that thing i <laughs> you know i i want to have a disease so that my healthcare budget goes up but but thank you for that thought uh, amit uh, you know uh, let me come to hemant uh, and and maybe after hemant we can go to puneet for closing comments hemant your comments please yeah on the roi piece as yeah and especially yeah. government i'm sure you will be semi government undertaking you will be uh, uh, getting this question a lot of times correct so it's very too early to say that what will be the roi of this because still this adoption is in progress and very early stage so it it will the roi will we can predict when the use cases will increase right now in banking industry in public sector banks we are using at the customer call centers as i said earlier so as amit said num- number of calls you cannot do with manually now this ai technology with robots you can do that similarly internal help help desk you can reduce the manpower by productive using ai and you are giving instant help to my uh, branches so that way if you calculate then a, a roi is a instant uh, suppose in uh, anti money laundering we are using here so if you are able to crack a single case of 1000 crore in a day it's, it's roi is done but actual roi will come as the maturity and use cases will increase then this regulatory you spoke about regulatory regulation is very important like rbi is having strict norms customer data is very important for us so now dp dpdp act is also on the cards so that will also be uh, bank has to see how ai 
customer data because every step you need a customer consent uh, when you are using this, when this DPDP Act will come to the picture. So a bank has to be ready now itself. Uh, it should not disrupt your AI model because if you start working that DPDP Act will come and then I will start working on AI. Um, uh, I have to reinvent my AI model, then it will disrupt your industry. So that is a major thing that bank has to take care, uh, prepare now itself to brace the DPDP Act consequences. I think trying to, embed, sorry, sorry, I have interrupted here because, uh, you know, we have CCTVs installed uh, in at our stores and there are a lot of companies who provide uh, video analytics, uh, you know, mood, age, gender, uh, the person's age uh, and what is the mood and all that stuff. So a lot of analytics in terms of uh, where the person is going in the store is also happening. But now they are uh, after DPDP Act and after listening to a lot of other uh, regulations, they are not saving the face of a customer. But they are uh, understanding almost 200 plus touch points of a body to give the uh, give the results of the person is a male or a female. Although it could be 70% or 80% accurate, but I think doing these kind of things, the algorithm will mature and you know come up with better results. But saving a face without the customer consent is definitely a no no. Right. So these kind of things are already happening in, in the industry wherein the analytics are coming out. See, customer consent is a very much uh, important thing. But in India, everyone knows how how much we are getting it. Right. Right. Correct. Yeah. So maybe uh, Puneet and Manjunath, one one sentence each from you so that we can close this. So uh, I think uh, no, you mentioned uh, the art of war, Jaspreet. You know, that reminds me. You know, in the army, there's a slogan, uh, the more you sweat in peace, the less you bleed in war. Wow. So I think, Excellent. So, so I think so what I wanted to say with that slogan was, you know, we need to quantify our KPIs, you know, and put some do good amount of level of time to see the tangible benefits are really possible or not when we define those models, when we define those POCs, those, those, when we do those AI pilots. So may not be able to 100%, you know, get those ROIs, which we predict in our PPT or slides uh, or sexual sheets. But I think uh, we'll get close somewhere. But I think invest some good time in that. And uh, we may be at least 80% close. I think that'll be good for us to, to start a journey on there. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. One last closing uh, comment think, from you, Manjula. I think we're in the right uh, time of the generation where we are seeing the extremes of technology adoptions and technology changes happening. Maybe as we mature and more and more are happening and more and more use cases are coming at the AI, then I can see the use case increase, uh, use case uh, of increased adoption. But today, everybody is uh, doing on a scary mode, as just as rightly told by the colleagues. So as we move and get more use cases and more generative uh, utilization for the business cases, I think we can uh, see more and more achievements happening in this world. And by the time we achieve this, we do not know what's next in the going to the variable technology is also going to come in a big way. That's also going to cause a huge disruption. So we can expect more in the future. Thank you. A big round of applause to all my panelists. I had a great time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks to you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, great panel. Thank you. Thank you.